preteens have become preoccupied with fame and are using social media to get it. In one focus group, 8 out of 20 kids said fame was the most important value to them, beating out things like kindness or success. And the Tide Pod Challenge is exactly the type of thing that tends to go viral, which is what these people probably want for their videos. Researchers have repeatedly found that content that makes us emotional is more likely to be shared. That can include things like anxiety or awe, as well as disgust. Now, because burning curiosity might encourage more risky behavior and challenge videos, here's what happens when you eat a Tide Pod. And frankly, there is a lot of burning. Laundry pods are full of chemicals called surfactants, which are molecules that can grab a hold of dirt on one end and attract water on the other. So when they're rinsed away, they remove grime. And that means they're great at cleaning clothes, but aren't meant to be inside of your body. Once they're in your mouth, the pod chemicals will start eating away at your tissues, from your throat down to your stomach. The most common reaction to this is vomiting, which can be extreme, like throwing up blood. Kids who have eaten the pods have stopped breathing, had seizures, or gone into comas. A few children have died, as well as several adults with dementia who ate pods. Doctors don't even know for sure why the pods are so dangerous, because regular liquid laundry detergent isn't as bad. It could be because of the higher concentration, the ingredients, or something about the packet itself. Laundry pods are also more toxic than dishwasher pods, and liquid pods are worse than powder ones. So of course the Tide Pod Challenge involves the most hazardous concoction. So internet, we understand the appeal, or at least we can guess until some psychologists do serious research on challenge videos. These pods are enough like food that the memes can be funny, but please don't actually eat them. You can't enjoy your fame if you're dead. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow News. If you want to learn more about the internet and our brains, you can go viral over on SciShow Psych at youtube.com slash SciShow Psych. What has happened in the last few years is that sub suppliers the t this is the number one trusted brand. When you eat a tomato from Florida, chances are it was grown in African soil. But not because someone shipped the dirt over there or anything. Every year, tons of dust from the Sahara Desert is kicked up by dust storms, blasted high into the sky, and whisked across the Atlantic Ocean on wind currents. It takes about a week, and then it's Hello Florida. In fact, our oceans and continents are all linked into this weird global dust ecosystem. Whether it's going from Australia to New Zealand, or from Asia to Oregon, the the current estimate worldwide is that 3 billion tons of dust move through the atmosphere every year. It comes with some powerful and surprising global effects, not all of which are good. But one way or another, this dust is definitely changing our world. Scientists can track how the dust moves using satellite images or by analyzing soil samples. The dust in certain regions tends to contain specific kinds or amounts of elements and they act kind of like a fingerprint. So by measuring where those fingerprints turn up, the researchers can see how the dust has migrated and what its effects are. A lot of those effects involve ecology. Like for starters, dust builds soil. Lots of soil. Scientists estimate that more than 30% of the soil in Barbados comes from Africa, and the stuff in the Bahamas and the Florida Keys mostly African imports. Besides being weird to think about, the dust is also really important. In fact, without African dust, the vegetation on some Caribbean islands wouldn't be nearly so lush. See, those islands, along with parts of Florida, are mostly built of crusty coral. When that coral breaks down, it leaves a pile of broken up calcium, which on its own isn't that fertile. But blast over some African dust and voila! You've suddenly got nutrients in your soil, like magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium, and things get a whole lot greener. Dust nourishes soil all over the world too, including in the Amazon rainforest and northern Hawaiian islands. So on your next tropical vacation, you can thank dust for the scenery. Now all that might sound great, 
and it is. But long distance dust can also bring less welcome visitors too, like pesticides and metals. For example, mercury made in China gets mixed in with the dust and blows east across the Pacific. Scientists have detected it in rivers and on top of roughly three kilometer high Mount Bachelor in Oregon. They know it's from China because it has a specific chemical